In this video, I will discuss the two perspectives of data. First, the before perspective, or before sampling, from which observations are random variables, and then the after perspective, or after sampling, in which observations are non-random realized values. So I have a few probabilistic props here. First is this coin. So here's the heads side. Here's tails. And I can flip the coin and see what it comes up. Now, after I flipped it, we can see in this case it's heads. It's just a single realized value. And we can represent that as a variable just like you would in a high school algebra class. We could call it f or w or c or omega or whatever letter you like, uh, but it would just represent a single value. It might be unknown, but it's just a single value just like in high school algebra. Now, if we went back in time to before I flipped it, or if I were going to flip it again, now that we're in the before perspective, we don't know whether it's going to be heads or tails. And not only do we not know, but both are actually possible. And in this case, they have approximately one half probability each. So before I flip it, the outcome of the next flip can be represented as a random variable where there are multiple possible outcomes, each with its own probability. And we could think about the die in the same way. I could roll it, and then after I roll it, we can see it's two. It's just a single realized value, in this case a number, two. If I were to roll it again, before I roll it, we don't know whether it'll be any of the integers from one to six, and each has approximately a one-sixth probability of coming up. So the outcome of my next roll is represented by a random variable with these six possible values, each with its own probability, in this case, approximately one-sixth. For my next trick, you can imagine this uh, set of playing cards is the population. And then I'm going to sample a card and put it into my sample. So I could, for example, just sample this one, and then we can see it's a 10. So here, after sampling, it's just a number, 10. That's a realized value. There's nothing random about it. And even if we go back in time to before I sampled it, it was still a 10. It's not like this card could have had another value, right? If we think of these as individuals, maybe this is, you know, years of education, it's not like an individual doesn't know their own years of education, or uh, hopefully they know, you know, how many kids they have, things like that. So from the individual's perspective, it's a realized value. But in terms of our before sampling perspective, I didn't have to sample that individual. I could have sampled this individual over here, and then I would have had a six as my observed value. Or I could have sampled this individual, well, it's the same number. I'm not actually a magician. I could have sampled this value and had a four in the sample. So even though these individuals all know their own values, 
if we're thinking about the observation in our data set that we're going to place in this space over here, that is a random variable because there are multiple possible values, 10, 4, 6, other values that we haven't seen, each with its own probability of being sampled and observed in the data set. So from the before sampling perspective also, we could think of observations as random variables.